What's up, everybody? This is your girl Erica from the Classy Climb Blog. You know I am in Detroit, nice city, investing. I got James Anderson here, born, raised. Go ahead and hit it up. What's going on, guys? It's your boy James Anderson, Mr. Be Great with Your Money, at I am JD Anderson, hanging out. Just, just in the audit, I actually got to meet one of my good online friends who talks about money, capitalism, and finance. So we're just kind of chopping it up. And she said, can I hang out for a minute and go live? So we here. You know your girl got to catch this airplane today. But we're going to get a few videos in. I got to see some of the Detroit. I still have more videos we're going to show of neighborhoods that are good, bad, Oakman. Uh, also, you know, some streets that were like confusing me. But <laughs> we're going to share all that. Welcome to Detroit, right? <laughs> Uh, and so uh, here with James, James is here, he's a podcaster, he's in finance. You know, this is a great opportunity for you guys to kind of see people who are from here, mm -hmm. what their thoughts are. And I'm gonna ask him some of the same questions that I asked Asia, just a few. So, so, so after the big 2008, 2009, um, what are some of your thoughts on what the city's doing to fix some of the blight in Detroit? Okay, that's a great question. So obviously you guys know Motor City, big on the automotive industry. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because at the automotive industry itself, I graduated from college with an automotive design degree in 2007, 2008 time frame. So I was gonna go out and actually be a automotive, like clay model or designer. That's what I wanted to do. I love cars, been around cars. You're from the Motor City, you love vehicles. And literally, you, I got an experience it firsthand as coming out, thinking that I go to school, get my degree, I come out, I get that job, work for or General Christ, one of the big three, and obviously I just fell flat because there was nothing to be had because the industry, was, we didn't even know if there was going to be a four GM or Chrysler at right. that time frame. Right? So, unfortunately, that left the city in a rough patch for a, a long time. It, I mean, it, it was rough here for several years. But to answer your question, some of the things that I see the city actually doing, one of the things I love about it is that we're, we're actually embracing creatives. We're embracing entrepreneurs. We're embracing people that's looking to renew and remake. So there's tons of there's tons of opportunities for real estate investing. There's tons of opportunities that's being presented by the city to to actually you know in, in really invest and take part as insurgents of the revitalization and rebuild Detroit, the new Detroit, how you want to call it. But I believe that those individuals that were here are still just as hungry as they were before. Yeah, it Detroit, just, does, Detroit does hustle harder. Yeah, we, Their we homeless hustle, hustle hard. hard. <laughs> so we hustle. Asia almost got handled, pound handled again today. <laughs> he, was, he was aggressive. We hustle hard here. So, but I believe, especially for us being in that millennial patch, like, like a lot of us who graduated during that crash time, we're coming out harder, we're coming out guns blazing, and we didn't leave the fight. And that's one that's one intangible that Detroit has is that we have such a tremendous, tremendous spirit, and we're very, very proud people. Mm -hmm. So when you couple that with, okay, city governments, local governments are starting to see that stuff go around, you start to see programs coming out, institutional programs that can help with entrepreneurs, you know, there's pitch factories, there's co-working place, there's there's a co-working place that just opened up over there as a collaborative space. All those things are just a breeding ground for people to take place in what's going to be the new Detroit economy, which is going to be tech, which is going to be industry specific, which is going to be just just getting on the last edge. The, the blue collar lifestyle, so we hustle. The blue collar lifestyle of just, you know, typically you go get a job at the plant. Uh -huh. It's not there anymore. It's, it's, not there. it's a new deal. Cheese has moved, y'all. There you go. The cheese has moved. Um, well, what I saw here a lot in Detroit is, you know, one, they loud. Two, the food is delicious. Uh, three, oh, when we were going to some of the neighborhood blocks, you know, we see a great house, great house, kicked in door. Great house, great house, kicked in door. And I would go, you know, you guys, I'm from a cop family, so I'm always like, why we ain't call the police and get the door locked, right? And everybody's like, because we mind our business here. Right. You know what I mean? Is that is that a cultural thing here? Is that just like, mind your business? Safety, when, what is it? Well, it's a couple of things, right? Number one, when you've been kind of beat down as hard as we have, you know, to us, for it might it just seems normal, right? We 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 just we're just kind of immune to it because it's normally what we see. I mean, 
several different family members who stay in Detroit, you know, walking around the city, it's not unusual to see a vacant house that's about to tip over, you know. Right, right, right. But since we see it so much, we've become immune to it. And that was not an excuse, right? It's, that's, that's not a tangible excuse because we should take responsibility and accountability for it. Right, right, right. And I always preach that anyway for individuals itself. I always preach that. But what we have to do and what we have to understand is that taking a critique for somebody like you from the outside to come in and say, hey, that's not normal. Maybe that shouldn't be like that. That's kind of right. even scary. Right. We got to take that with a positive light and look like, yeah, you know, maybe we got to come out of our Detroit scope and right, look right. at how things should be. So you're absolutely in, you're absolutely key that we got to, uh, we got to do that, but it's just we kind of do our own thing. We mind our own business, you know. We we're not afraid of anything, and we're not trying to antagonize anything. Right, so right. we just do, mind your business. We just do us. Thing. That's what we say. Right. We just do us. Okay, so so part of what um, when I was going out with my contractor the other day, like you know, there were some houses a little bit maybe you had some people got in them squatter laws. We did establish that we have squatter laws here. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. Um, she forgot her Second Amendment. I didn't have my Second Amendment, so okay. we didn't want to go in that house. Um, you're in the financial side of things. Do you, as a financial person, mm -hmm. uh, what is it you think is lacking? Is it the education? Is it the investment? Is it, you know, people just don't know. They don't know, you know, to put money away. They don't know, what, 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 is, what's, what do you think is missing here? The biggest problem that I see is just people don't know what they don't know, right? right? And it's just the, the, the lack of education. I mean, we come from, a, in the, here in the Metro Detroit area, we come from a long line of, Hey, you used to, used to can go to high school just with a high school diploma and go and work in a plant and make sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars a year with overtime mm -hmm. and not need anything else because the companies were gonna take care of you. Right. That's just how it was for Pinch such a, it was just such a long time. So you were set, right? So now you got this big insurgence of this isn't happening anymore and you wasn't because the culture wasn't there to teach you about investing, to teach you about saving, to teach you about expenses and things of that nature. You just always knew that you had a safe, secure job and you will always, you know, have over time, you will always have the opportunity to make money. That's not here anymore. Right. So I believe the biggest problem is just that individuals don't know two critical things. Number one, they don't understand cash flow, right? Mm -hmm. They don't understand money in of itself. So when you don't understand cash flow and money, you obviously are not going to really be, um, how should I say, you're not going to be the savviest investor. You're not going to be like, if, you, if you can't get those simple two things down, unfortunately, you, you're not going to get into the investment stage of what we have to do. So cash flow, understanding what you have going on in your household, and then from uh, there, understanding the things that you can do to actually put yourself in that position. It's just not a common conversation. There's just now meetups starting to talk about investing, and it's just now uh, we're all groups where, where people meet in Detroit to really focus on, okay, what's the next step for everybody? So that's a great question. You just don't know what you don't know. It's not a talk here, you know? Right. So, so a thing I, I'm seeing is a lot of people say that the air for the infrastructure, the city wasn't built for mass transit, the city wasn't built for trains. And this is very much a city. I have seen a lot of, like the downtown, this is very much a city. And it is true, they don't really have the transportation. And even if you move all the jobs in the suburbs, there's no way for some people to get to work. Right. Um, and so that's a problem for sure. But it's about being flexible. The city itself doesn't seem as flexible as other cities. Um, I 100% agree with that. You're, you're absolutely right. The city is not, I mean, you know, would you would competition be built on your biggest business or your biggest industry? And that is, you know, automotive. So I do 100% agree with that. The mass transit system is lacking, like we were talking earlier. However, there's other things that you can do, other services that you can do, other ways that you can partake in the industry to do that. There's so many creatives and so many people in general moving businesses here because there's so much property real estate cheap so prices, man it's so incentive. cheap and people are just coming in in droves like oh the hipsters are for real out here man we it's just they here. just buy this loft and start a business I mean, right, that's right, right. that's kind of the traditional story you know yeah i wanted to like i, I want to interview you and different people in detroit because i want to say there isn't a, a brain drain like right. most cities if all the young people leave or all certain people leave it's a brain drain you know like chicago lost uh, 3,000 mm -hmm. millionaires and 300,000, you know, wealthy to do that families. And people are like, well, it's a brain drain. Right. And that's not true. You have people who are here still fighting for their city. And so I see some of your questions are, hey, Battle Creek, Camille. What up, BC? <laughs> we have, hey, Derek Bailey. 
Um, knowledge is power, but applied knowledge is powerful. Absolutely. Absolutely. Is there opportunities in, I don't know how to say that, Saginaw? Saginaw, yeah, absolutely. There's opportunities in Saginaw. There's a lot of facilities. On, I'll speak from a business standpoint, and I'll speak from the standpoint of a job, okay? Because you need both to have income, right? So up there, as far as jobs are concerned, um, there's definitely a lot of a lot of rental properties. It's look in the Bridgeport area, and um, there's a lot of opportunities for property and even starting up businesses. And a lot of areas up there have have trailer parks, okay? Mm -hmm. And the trailer parks up there are being often droves because they're being dilapidated. So people yeah. companies are going in and fixing up those trailer parks and actually making them better and, you know, in my eyes, it's making a business model out of that. The second thing I would say, especially on the corporate side of things, if you're corporate America, is that a lot of facilities are being moved up there because there's space and opportunity, so a lot of factories, new OEMs are coming online, and a lot of automotive suppliers are up there where you can actually participate in that in that particular field as assembly workers, engineers, they're looking for IT infrastructure, people, systems and people, so it's a ton of opportunity up north. We're not gonna be out here forever. It's gonna be a shorter <laughs> one because I gotta catch a plane. But um, CJ said, "What is the economic outlook industries that stabilize Detroit? Uh, is there growth? I want to know how would renters pay if they're long-term investors out there? Mm -hmm. um, now, from what just my personal perspective, there when I went to the investor meeting here, there is a lot of California African Americans, New York African Americans, um, Israeli people. There's all kind of people coming here investing." Mm -hmm. Even the people that live here, but but more so outside, right? right? Because the prices are low. Um, right. People are going to still rent five hundred dollars, six hundred dollars, seven hundred dollars places, regardless. Mm -hmm. If the economy goes up or down, they're still going to rent. They're right. going to hustle hard, or you know, the casino. My Uber driver was funny because he was like, "Yeah, you know, it's not fun like Las Vegas. Everybody in there trying to win their rent money." And <laughs> right, I was right, like, right. I was laughing, but it was like it's kind of spot on. The vibe yeah. I got out of there was like, it's a "I'm here to win. I'm here to win." Yeah. You know. Um, but what industries do you see kind of coming to stabilize this? Or is it just the creation from creatives? Um, I think that one of the industries definitely is going to help us out is um, we're, we're going to, and I know a little bit about the automotive industry because I participate in it, but I believe that the automotive industry, as we keep globalizing and going out, I know some people are going to be upset with me because they're going to say they're taking jobs away from the U.S., but there's new automotive facilities, especially within the big three, opening up all over the world. So things like infrastructure, logistics, shipping, all those are opportunities in new industries as far as globalization and we know tariffs and taxes are changes mm -hmm. so that's a huge opportunity right there to help these automotive suppliers get their parts out yeah get their parts out mm -hmm. um, of course China and India need their parts absolutely yeah. and of course the uh, creative side of things but I do believe the new tech um, new tech and new service and this and I've even seen a big um, in the renovation of Detroit because obviously everybody's buying this, buying this property mm -hmm. right renovations through the roof because people are buying property flipping property especially in commercial real estate they're redoing the inside of properties they're making them into lofts so construction companies contractors it's construction everywhere going on man right you, everywhere big every big turn is construction and from an investor standpoint on the second part of the question i do believe you know every you know detroit is just known for 500 to a thousand dollar a month per door rents that's just what it is thousand dollars you know, five hundred to thousand dollars a month rents, no matter suburbs and cities, whatever. That's just kind of the normal price of what we have going on here because of our economic scale. So, people can meet the five hundred to a thousand dollars a month a lot easier, in my eyes, in this economic environment than they could the twelve hundred to fifteen hundred to sixteen hundred dollars a month rent. So, people are going to opt for more, and especially if you have people, the millennials, that's a little bit more. Um, a little bit more conscious when me in the city, they have paid the cheaper rents, and I think they're staying longer. Well, no, Derek Bailey, the, the the investment is here downtown. Downtown is loaded construction right now. There's a lot of conversion of buildings and properties that we're seeing. There's a, a hotel being built. Is that a hotel in that big giant hole in the ground? There's a giant skyscraper hotel being built. Uh, there's three casinos down here. Three casinos down here. It, it's investment here, and that's why I'm so glad I came. Because if you just watch the Shea Show, which I, Mr. Shea, I want to meet you next time. I just like, you, you watch Shea Show, you're like, man, it's like a war zone out there. Oh, yeah, then I come yeah. here and it's like, it's, it's beautiful. It's nice. Yeah, I mean, it's, Downtown it's, was vibing. It's, it's the it has its places, but you know what I mean? And uh, the, the good thing about other communities, too, is that Detroit always have pockets. And that's what I was telling Erica. We got pockets everywhere. Mm -hmm. So there might be no opportunity on this block, but you walk a block over and you got several lots to pick from. So, you know, several houses to pick from. And it all depends on what your scale is. Are you looking for, you know, 10 doors or are you looking for one door? So those are the kind of things that's there. 
Um, so Frankie was making some points about homeschooling his son and the schools here are kind of tough uh, and it's a lot of hustle. And what I'm hoping for people to get out of uh, me coming there, uh, me coming here and me doing some of the courses I do, that you can invest yourself or you can get a group of investors together or you can work online from your computer at home and you can work for companies because that's the thing. They're kind of going on a curve of like outsourcing, outsourcing, outsourcing. So. Derek Bailey said the weather here is kind of crazy. It snows in September. Hey, it might snow today. Who knows? Well, and here's the thing. Some people don't, you know, I'm in Texas and people are like, yo, I can't do the heat. I'm out of here. Right. Some people in California are like, hey, I, I moved to the Midwest because they want seasons. Mm -hmm. Every weather is different, right? Yeah, absolutely. Black Knight Code. Now, I wouldn't mind investing there. Just need people on the ground with knowledge to connect with and work with. See, that's the thing, Black Code and Coding. We've, we invested in these houses, but we didn't see them sight unseen. Like, and so one of the houses I went to, I was like, oh, I, I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have bought this, right? And then another one I saw, I was like, this is perfect. If I could get 20 of these mm -hmm. with a nice renter, she's like semi-retired. This is wonderful, yeah. right? Uh, this is a great deal. But you gotta have eyes or somebody you can work with and trust and take pictures. So that's why I bought Miss Denson on yesterday. You know, you pay her $100 before you jump on some right. auction of a house that probably fell in the ground because the pictures are three years old. Right, absolutely. So, thank you, Anthony Bass. We love putting this information out too. Carmela, that's the whole point, is to invest in some of these neighborhoods ourselves. Absolutely. Oh, crap. By the hood, back. I'm a big promoter of that. She said most people don't read here. Now, there is a trend that's going on in some major cities where Detroit, Chicago, uh, Mississippi. Now, what the test is saying, the school test is saying, that people are kind of at an eighth grade level, mm -hmm. right? Like, and that's kind of what most of our school books are made at, an eighth grade level. So if you start testing people outside that, then it does look like a lot of people can't read or don't have comprehension. Mm -hmm. Now, last time I checked, I have a lot of dyslexic, dyslexic clients who make good money. Right. Because at the end of the day, if you can hear audible, somebody can show you a video, yeah. you're still functional. Well, it's about the way that you learn, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that's the key, okay? I, now, I was a person, I'm not, uh, you know, I give you guys just the 30 second little history, mm -hmm. right? Detroit Public Schools all my life, right? Um, probably skipped more days in 10th and 11th to 12th grade than I probably mm -hmm. went to, right? Mm -hmm. Barely graduated, had to go to summer school to actually graduate, take five classes, had to sell my counselor and let me take another class <laughs> just with her one on one because I needed yeah. six to actually graduate. Mm -hmm. But it never stopped me from actually learning, okay? Mm -hmm. And I was going through a very tough time in, um, I was going through a very tough time in, in Detroit Public Schools at that time. The school board was getting the financial man and all types of crazy stuff was going on. State was trying to take over, like schools oh. sucked when I was in high school. Yeah. But made it across the stage there, went to my first year of college, fell flat on my face. Then I said, okay, let me start getting serious. And I started focusing on personal development and, you know, and started putting myself out there. So I, I absolutely, absolutely agree, but it comes down to how does the person actually learn? How does the person put themselves out there? And I think once you do that, the sky's the limit. Because technically, growing up on growing up on Joy Road, growing up on Schoolcraft, I was never supposed to succeed, and yet I did. So yeah. it comes down to put immersing parents yourself in that the environment. Parent, the parents are the first teacher to all the truth, regardless. And uh, maybe you don't realize this, but babies, how do babies learn to talk? It's not that you mouth it, it's 90% of it's hearing and looking and listening. So not everybody loses that. So for me, what I've noticed is there's some kids I went to school with, they were half listening, half working. So now they're going out the world with half working. <laughs> and if their parents don't enforce reading at home, like I'm, I'm meeting a lot of white and black parents who are like, I didn't know my son was dyslexic. Right. So what you just told me is your son didn't read to you when he came home. Right. They didn't redo their paperwork. That means you didn't check their homework mm -hmm. because you would have seen letters reversed. Right. You would have seen issues from five to fifteen. Right, right. So really, that's a combination of not the school's fault, not the city's fault, but the mom and dad's fault. Right. Absolutely. And we, you know, I on this channel, we're a personal responsibility whether we like it or not. All right. <laughs> so that's I'll say that. And you are the kid's first teacher. It is your job. And so I, anytime I meet homeschool parents, I'm like, accountability. You, you the boss. Yeah. That's what's up. Derek Bailey says, I'm in, in New York, Jersey. It gets cold here, but not like Michigan. Nah, it, it's nah. ridiculous. Ooh, I've been in uh, <laughs> Jersey some places. I'm like, let y'all have that. Um, somebody's says, in Florida, so West Palm Beach. Summer school was a long time ago. 
Oh, she uh, said they don't have money to invest in teachers for summer school. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was bad then. It was like yeah. 50, 60, 60 of us in one class. Uh, Maurice Anderson, I don't know about investing in transit. I don't know what's the big push here. They have a thing called the People Mover. I rode on it. It was cracking me up. But it, it does move you around downtown. Like yeah, in a circle. it literally it does what it's supposed literally to do. It's quite a People Mover, so it's going to move you just a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> like, there were some old people on there. And I believe the, the infrastructure is there, and it just has to be on a large enough macro scale. Yeah. And we need to get there. Which, you know, Frankie, some of that's true, um, but at the end of the day, we have to find in where we fit in, where we get it, well, and best where we can. Certainly enough, it's just accountability, and I'm a big person on accountability, and I never point the finger, because on 8 Mile in White, no, 8 Mile in Livernoy, it was a black-owned gas station, and he struggled for years because people were still around shop all the time because it was a black owned gas station. Yeah. Also, when my parents stayed on Ida Drive, you guys are familiar with the area, Ida Drive and Seven Mile also has another black owned gas station there. And to take the time to go from, you know, say you live out in Southfield, live out in uh, Reference, or you stay out in Dearborn, and go all the way over there to actually support your own, what do you do? And that's the case that we have to really focus yeah. on. Yeah. And then also on the flip side of that is business lines of credit and other investments for him. Now, most people, when they start businesses, uh, they have higher amount of investment, right. higher amount of savings, mm -hmm. other investments. You know, I tell people all the time, like when I have my coffee shop, if I would have started doing stuff online, it would have supplemented the income we were losing Absolutely. because of the ring, right? So it. so a lot of people, when I, my Uber driver, I thought was interesting while I was here, as he was driving me, he was like, well, it wasn't my fault. It wasn't <laughs> me or my friend's fault. We all lived in the suburbs. Yes. That's just what it was. Right. And you left downtown because that was... That was the program. Mm -hmm. And when I looked at him, I realized what he was trying to do. It was like he was trying to apologize for the condition of the city and kind of give a hit a, a vibe, you know, alternative history. Right. And I want to go do. It's all good. Like it's yeah. like it's all good. Um, you it's know, what's the difference the now? Now it's, what do you do now? It's gold How do y'all make Detroit better now? Absolutely. And um, you, you know, you make that with investment, you make that with people visiting. Um, I went to go take a picture of Joe Lewis arm, the pit, which I'm very upset about them tearing down the stadium. I think that's trashy. Yeah. I think, you know, if you're a city that says this guy was one of our guests, you fix the stadium. Fix Instead of putting a Little Caesar stadium. Yeah. Did Little Caesar start here? Okay. <laughs> all right. Whatever. <laughs> they they tripping a lot. And like I say, the Illich family and all of them, they tripping yeah. a lot too. They but, okay. You know, but I, but, but, but I, you know. Yeah, no. the fist, the fist, the fist. The fist. And then the fist doesn't even have signs around it to tell you what it's about. Yeah. So it's almost this like nondescript fist, but it's awesome. And I'm glad you take a picture. Whenever you Instagram it, it says Joe Lewis. So, yeah, that's, that's um, a good thing. <laughs> I think there should be more for local heroes. Absolutely, like absolutely. I'm 100% agree with that. And I, I, I mean, I think it's just, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of flaws to point out. Mm -hmm. Like I tell with most people, trying to be careful. Of, yeah, be a, careful about it. There, there's a lot of flaws to point out, but where there is problems and where there is issues are tremendous opportunities. Yes. And counts. when you do that, when you look at it from that standpoint, the the sky is almost the limit mm -hmm. for anybody to do anything. I mean, when I when I heard it, when I was, was listening to a video from a guy from Toronto who's a photographer who said he's about to move to Detroit because he can get a photo studio at a fraction of the cost and be closer to his U.S. clients anyway because he'd at least be on this side of the we're Canadian right by Canada. border, right? Yeah. He said that that was the best thing that he could ever do. And when I look at it like that, I'm like, hold up. What's the opportunity here? The problem is that Toronto is so expensive to get a yes. property downtown. But here is just so much cheaper he increases profits from there and i'm like wow that's amazing uh, so we've already got uh, invited me and asia to toronto for the caribbean jamaican okay. festival uh some kind of carnival mm -hmm. in august um you know i saw canadian tags everywhere the key here is you have to have it the city be welcoming to investors and a period it has to be welcoming to investors um, you know, if the there's a hundred dollar lot program, so if you buy a house and the lot beside it's you know vacant, house tore down, everything, you can get it for a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. So, so that to me is a great incentive that saves the city money cutting the grass. Right. That lets you control that corner. Mm -hmm. If you want to grow, if like this is the thing, when people keep saying, oh Eric, I want to do sustainable gardening, right. and they have a house and they have an empty lot beside them. Well, why didn't you participate in the hundred dollar lot program right. so you can have a garden right beside your house that you talk so much about? Yeah. Exactly. You know what I mean? It starts here. Starts with us investing in, but it also starts here. So I love that I have a actual person perspective who lived it. And it's just the same. She went to school in Jackson State, Mississippi for I don't know many years, four years, five years. But she came back. So it's like 
yeah. you know, starts with the people that live here. <laughs> Absolutely, and, it's, and it's, it's up to us to get it done. And you know, I'm I'm all for everybody need to invest, but like I say, my my number one statement is you got to have your financial house in order before you invest because that's the only way your investment is going to be sustainable. Yeah. And making it sustainable is what makes the longevity, which makes everything in the community better. And we just keep cycling and cycling and cycling and cycling. Now there is, there are two things I want to hit them with, but we're going to have to do it in another video because I do have to run. <laughs> but one of them is talking about Detroit. If you make 52,000 a year, you're rich. Okay, yeah. That's okay. one. Yeah, that's, that's a video the, for next week or when you got right, time. Right. Number two video is about what we talked about, investment and retirement. Mm -hmm. What I call lately the poor Richard's retirement and then the other version is investing your way to there. Yep, so, so that's what we're going to save for the next two topics. Next time you see them, that's what our topic is going to be. Okay. Because when I hear a house is $1,000 beside somebody, I go, well, why don't you buy it? Right? Or, um, uh, you know, Miss Dennison even told us yesterday that there's a house beside her mom for $11,000. She told her mom, don't do it. Oh, my God, don't do it. And her mom didn't do it because, you know, her daughter was in construction. Right. That house is now worth 150000 Her mom was like... We could have did that. We could have did that, right? So it's so low. And the property she purchased is an extra duplex. Okay. She got for two thousand five hundred. Yeah. Now it looked like it, it looked like it needs fifty seventy. But you got two But doors. she got it for two thousand five hundred. Right. And it's old historic brick. I mean, there's some beautiful architecture here. It looks like German influence, Polish influence. 1880s, 1860s. On the west side, um, actually, um, off of like Warren area, mm -hmm. um, you can still go over and actually see Polish markets. Yeah, I saw a, a Irish Gaelic a club, and what was funny is the guy's like, "Oh yeah, the Irish people left and went to this way other place, mm -hmm. but that's still there because they'll still do an annual yeah. thing there." Absolutely, Detroit is, has a lot of pockets of ethnicity, mm -hmm. and you can definitely see the resemblance. The Greeks own Greek town. Thank you, Anthony Bass, for the super chat, five dollar super chat. Thank you, right, appreciate awesome. that. Um, uh, but yeah, you can see the influence of Greek Town is literally owned by the Greeks. Mm -hmm. They play in Greek music like it's a jam out on the street. <laughs> I was like, and someone bought the hotel and they're gonna call it Jacks. I said, now come on now, yeah. it's Greek Town. Yeah. I don't care if the Greek guy name is Jack. It's Greek Town, yeah, right? So <laughs> let's keep it in tune with the flavor. All right. uh, and so uh, we're gonna cut it here. I'm gonna get on. I'm gonna get my Uber on and get on the road. Listen, you guys, this is Erica Williams from the Classy Climb Blog. If you need to talk to me about tax liens, consulting, or marijuana stocks, you know to invest in the bottom. When I come back to Detroit, I am gonna do, do a tour of their marijuana industry. Hey, hey. Because they have medical marijuana, so that's for our future video. <laughs> um, thank you, Sky Club, love it. Um, thank you, Anthony Bass. Way. Anthony Bass gave us a super chat of $5. Since he was the only super chat of this show, he is, this show, thank you, sponsored by Anthony Bass. All right, awesome. We'll put that in the comments. Keep doing your thing. Hey, Bella Thumb, um, go ahead and give him your outro. So, my name is James Anderson, Mr. Be Great With Your Money, at I am JD Anderson, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, it's all the same thing, at I am JD Anderson. And all I want to do is make sure that people are being great with their money. So, I want to talk about business, money, capitalism, and finance. Thank you, Erica, for having me on and hanging out with you. You're in the city, so I said, let's link up. Good minds link up. Let's get it go ahead and get it done. Hey, appreciate all you guys. You guys keep rolling it. This girl got a ton of information, so let's go ahead and get it done, guys. Keep being great with your money. Thank you all the last shout out Star Asia, CJ, Bella Fam, Anthony Bass. Again, this show was sponsored by Anthony Bass. Our only yeah. super chat today. All right, you guys have a great day. All right.